This morning's topic is not a pleasant one, but our guest is. You'll meet her coming up next on Carolina People. Carolina people. This morning we're at family owned and operated Ace Hardware on Kings Highway between 76th and 79th Avenues North in Myrtle Beach. We're focused on Mercy Hospice and palliative care and we're visiting with its director of development. Carol Beaudry. Good morning. Good Carol. morning, Greg. Thank you so much for coming in early thank on a Thursday morning. Well, thank you for allowing me to come in and talk about my organization Absolutely. that I'm so passionate about. I know you are. For the last, you joined the last year? Right, in June of 2006. Is that right? right. Yes, but have been very interested in the care for others for many, many right. years. Right. I have been involved with nonprofits for the past 15 years. Oh, yeah. So, really, oh, yeah. that is where my interest lies. What about this Ace Hardware? Yeah. Yeah, they fantastic. have everything. They really do. They it's do. Amazing. I love the chairs out front. Yeah, They're yeah. Neat. yeah. They were kind enough to open it up a little early for us. They actually open at 8 o'clock, but to let us in early to do some filming. Right. They have everything you need. They really they do. do. I was kind of amazed walking yeah, through here, do. not having been in a hardware store in so, oh, uh, in so long. Mercy Hospice uh, and Palliative Care have been around for a good while. Right. In fact, uh, we celebrated our 25th anniversary last year. Is that and, right? And I'm sure you probably saw it in, oh, yeah. in the news. Uh, Sister Connie, who had been with Mercy Hospice for 25 years, right. Sister Connie Fahey, retired. And mm -hmm. we had a big celebration for her. I remember. And, uh, we, she was very influential, a real legacy oh, yeah. for Mercy yeah. Hospice. Right. I remember some of those great full-page ads. Right, the, the right. Fancy colors like yeah. the ones you're wearing. The right, our purple. Our jumps purple. out yeah. uh, at everyone, kind of the Mardi Gras right, colors. Right, very right. Handsome, right. Very handsome. Right. And, of course, I remember that layout about her, the sister. Uh, she's been, she'd been involved with the organization for 25 years. 25 years. years. In fact, Mercy Hospice was started by the Franciscan Sisters of Mary. Right, and right. And she was involved then, was with us for 25 years years and we had other sisters on board and they just within the past year they have all retired mm, boy. So, but they, uh, big transition right, for Mercy right, Hospice wow right, right. real quick about yourself Carol are you originally from the area I am originally from Fayetteville, North Carolina. Oh, boy. But I have Cumberland a, County. Cumberland yes, County. Yes, You saw a family there? I do. My sister still is there with her family, but I have lived in South Carolina longer than I did in North Carolina. So exactly. I really right. call South yeah, Carolina South my Carolina home. Right. So you're a Palmetto yeah. State. I am uh, definitely yeah. a sand yeah. lapper. I like it. Yeah. I like yeah. it. Good. Yeah. And you've got family in the area? I do. Um, my daughter and son-in-law and two grandchildren live in Myrtle's Inlet. Great, yes. And, and, uh, we had a guest on Tuesday who's at a home in Merle's Inlet for 53 years, Carol. Wow. And Powell. Really? was with us just a couple days ago, who lives in Florence now, but is a Marion native, and has had a home in Merle's Inlet since before Hurricane Hazel. Well, yeah. when I was a child, my neighbor had a home in Merle's Inlet, and I used to come down in the summers with them, Yeah. and there was nothing. Oh, very yeah. Very yeah. I mean, three or four houses in Merle's Inlet. Yeah, that's right. I love that area. Very yeah, nice very area. very special. Yeah. Absolutely. So you've got a daughter who lives in Merle's Inlet now. Merle's Inlet. And, and grandchildren. Two grandchildren. And her husband. And two other girls, but they're in, one's in Columbia in med school, and one's uh, great. You've got a daughter yeah. in med school. Uh, wow, right, that's a lot of work. Right. Yeah. yeah, she's looking at a lot, a lot of years ahead of her. Yeah, too. she is. So, she's finished her undergraduate, and she's now in med right. school. Right, so she started her second year. She's an M2 at, that's at USC School of Medicine. Yeah, and they, your other daughter is close by. Right, she works at Creek Rats in Merle's Inn. Oh, and great! Another school, Merle's, another Merle's Inn girl. Like that. that's <laughs> yeah, great. yeah, yeah, that's yeah. That's great. Yeah. Right. And any boys or just three girls? Well, I have a grandson. Yes. Uh, so first, you now have first a, boy. a male connection yeah, for you and your husband. Right, yeah. right. That is yeah, great. We're real proud of him. He's, he's all boy. 
Well, I remember seeing your husband recently, and he talked to me about one of your daughters who was a skiing champion or something. She was out on the water all the time, which prompted you all to have a home up near a lake or right, a lake. Right, right. Uh, That's why we moved. I had lived in Bennettsville at one time. Right. But we were in Florence and moved back to Bennettsville because she was skiing competitively. Is that right? She was on the ski team at Clemson University. No, they have a ski team. They do. That's they not do. something they had at Wake Forest. Yeah. <laughs> they did. I, not a I'm ski surprised. team. <laughs> they had a, had a good football team last year. Oh, yeah, year. last year. Oh, wow. I was year. really yeah. pulling for the Deeks. Yeah, thank you. But anyway, she um, she was on the ski team, and we had a house at Santee right. and a house in Florence, and we were going back and forth so much to Santee that yeah. we were missing out on so much. Right. So we bought this home in Venice on Lake Paul Wallace, wow. and she could ski in, her, in the backyard. Yeah, so it worked. she did. She yeah. did, and my husband can live anywhere within the yeah. state. So that's right. It worked out well. Has she kept that competitively? Is she still doing that? Is that the daughter who's that, coastal? Or the no, one? this is the oldest one that's married. Oh, okay. She's a nurse. Yeah. No, she, right. she, she'll probably have her, her youngsters on skis, yeah, but yeah. <laughs> she's kind of giving it up at that this point. That is fascinating. Right. All the efforts that parents go to. Oh, it's kind of like, and we're going to talk about Mercy, and you think about all the efforts that you and all the folks within Mercy Hospice and Palliative Care and all the volunteers go to, but you think about what parents do. Right. to make a difference for their children. And uh, you all actually moved from right. Florence up there oh, to Marlboro my children, County. My, my children were my life. I yeah. devoted my everything to them, yeah. and I, I'll be working for the next... 20 years yeah. to get, get them out of school. That's right. <laughs> they, That's they're depending on me, so yeah. ho hopefully my health will hold up and yeah. I can do it. Yeah, right. Carol. Right. Of course, you know, when we think about to Mercy, if a viewer needs to get off to work now or get family out of the house, what's the best phone number? And do you all have a website if a, if a visitor wanted, a viewer wanted to call and right. learn more we about Right. We are Mercy? very proud of our website. We yes. were written up in the National Hospice and Palliative Care Association newsletter yeah. designating if you want to see a good website, to go to mercyhospice.org. Yes, and yes. And that's we were very proud of that to be mm -hmm. here in Horry County and to get national recognition for our website. Yes, it's Mercy Hospice www.mercyhospice.org. Yes, and there is tremendous information on there. I was on there early this morning right. printing stuff right. out, and uh, a lot of great frequently asked questions to help prep for the interview. A lot of great questions and, right there on site. And we also have a connecting website that. It answers all kind of medical questions, and Good. it's fantastic. I didn't even see that. The site's so dang big. Yeah, yeah. It is. Yeah. It's so big, and you'll have to check that out again. But um, we want everyone to go to visit our website okay. because we want to... We're in the very near future, we're going to be asking about our email addresses for our newsletter. We're going Good. to start send, trying to send our newsletter Great. out via email. Okay. For so. viewers who may not use the Internet much or may not have familiarity with going online, is there a phone number for someone to call and learn more? Or if they have some frequently asked questions, if oh, someone yes. to call and ask questions? Right. 347-5500. Okay. 347-5500. Okay. Right. And, Folks are there, even if someone's not there right now at 7.15, they could leave a message. Uh, oh, they'll get an answer in service, okay, right. Sure, we sure. are available 24-7. Great. That's part of hospice services. Okay. Even if, when the offices are closed, we have someone on call and answering service so someone could help them that is at wonderful. any time of day or night. Carol, you're now the director of development, so you're obviously out and about uh, all over the place. Right, uh, out in the community. Yes. Um, I'm in charge of fundraising. I'm in charge tracking all the donors, acknowledging all the donors, writing all the grants, and we are a non-profit hospice. Uh, uh, we have a lot of competition now for, uh, with hospices that are for-profit. Yes, you do, all right, over the viewing right. area, a lot there of There are like sure. 20 other hospices Is in the ORE right? wow. only. That, um, but we're the only nonprofit in Ori. Now, Tidelands is a nonprofit in Georgetown okay, County. Okay, right. And they have an inpatient facility there. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, I'm in charge of fundraising, and this is something we have to do, being a nonprofit. Sure, sure. And uh, we are so appreciative of our supporters and donors because we ha do have indigent patients. Right. And we have community programs that are not paid for by insurance or Medicare. Yes. And, um, I, I, we haven't really talked about this, but hospice services are paid by Medicare and Medicaid in most states. Mm -hmm. uh, it depends on the state. Uh, 
like 23 out of the, uh, 50 states Is that uh, right? have Medicaid service for mm -hmm. hospice. Uh, most private insurances will pick up the hospice tab. Great. So, um, you know, hospice originated in London, England in 1968. I was about to ask, right. of course, where that, uh, that, name, that phrase, the name came from. Right, from London, England okay. in 1968. It started in America in 1970, hospice services. Uh, you know, when our great grandparents came along, they were all they were born and died at home. Right. And then when the modern hospitals came along, we kind of got out of that tradition, and uh, people, a lot of people, went to the hospitals to right. die. But surveys have shown that 80 percent of Americans today prefer to die surrounded by friends and loved ones in their own in home. their own home. Mm -hmm. And if that's not available and they don't have a caretaker, we do go into the nursing home. Right. And now, and, and this is also taken uh, care of by Medicare and Medicaid. That's very important. Right. I bet a lot of viewers didn't know that. They right. probably right. wouldn't call because they think it's too expensive. You know, it's too, they right. wouldn't, wouldn't be able to afford that uh, to be able to stay home. Right. Greg, I'm amazed at uh, the number of people today that are not familiar with hospice services. Yeah, yeah. I, and I, you're I, talking I, about both for the nonprofit, the one nonprofit right, here, all, as right, well as the 20 right. for profit companies, and it's the same for all of y'all, the uh, the government essentially will pick up at right. least here in South Carolina. Right, right. Those uh, th those costs. And it's um, you know, dying is part of life, mm -hmm. and it's a lot of times people don't want to talk about it or oh. think about it. And that's why we try to educate the community and the public uh, about advanced directives, end of life issues, right. because you need to think about these issues when you're healthy. What are some of the some of the ways you're able to do that, Carol? That you're able to get people to begin thinking about the end of their life or about advanced reactors? What are some of the some of the ways that you can do that softly? We have community educators, and right. I, for one, will go out into the community and speak at organizations or at churches. We have par partnered with a number of churches to uh, to have grief support groups yeah. and to have educational programs. But it's so important for all. I don't care what age you are to have a, um, a living will or even a, a medical power of attorney because right. anyone could be in an accident right. and, and, and not have their faculties tomorrow. Right. So this it, it needs to be planned. It's very, very, I know it's something we don't want to think about. Mm -hmm. We don't want to think about dying or anything, oh, yeah. but it's part of life. And um, hospice services are absolutely fantastic. They not only help the patient, to help the family as well. Oh. When a person is referred for hospice services, Greg, you have to be diagnosed with six months or less to live. Is that That's right? The That's criteria. the criteria. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, right. you have to be diagnosed with six months or less to live right. for the government to step in and right. cover the cost of. Of course, we don't kick them out if they live. The, a and month that's, later. I'm sure you that's know, a frequently no, asked yeah, that's question. A frequently if they've been diagnosed for five months to live, for instance, or right at six months, they end up living seven or more, right. or around that. And that's some, something no sure. one knows. The sure. physicians don't know that. Right, They're just right. predicting that. Yeah. But um, if you're diagnosed with six months or less to live, you could qualify for hospice services. And uh, as I said, Medicare, Medicaid, and most private insurances pick up the full tab. Medication, everything. Mm -hmm. uh, equipment, everything. But once a person is um, uh, um, signs up and is qualified for hospice care, they are assigned a team. Okay. And we, we work as a team approach. We, uh, and each patient will have an a, a RN, um, a, a CNA, a certified nursing assistant, right. a volunteer, a social worker, and a chaplain. Okay. And we, Is that right? Right. right. Each patient Each will have patient. access to that many professionals. Right. That's right. tremendous. Isn't that tremendous? That and is this tremendous. helps the family as well as the patient. And we will see the family, I mean, this is part of it, we will offer bereavement services to the family up to a year after the patient dies. Is that right? Right. That's tremendous. Plus, we have uh, community um, adult and children bereave um, programs. Uh, we have a child's uh, camp. Mm -hmm. that, in fact, that's coming up September the 16th. Mm -hmm. 
a couple uh, weeks from now. Is that right? Yeah, right okay, right. yes. Yeah, so That's coming up. We have partnered with the um, Presbyterian Church, the community Presbyterian Church in Carolina Forest. Right, right. And it will be at 12 o'clock right after church. So September 16th. 16th. Okay, mm -hmm. today's Thursday, August 30th, so on September 16th. 18th. And, of course, there's another big event uh, entirely separate coming up on Saturday, September 29th. 29th, right. What is that, Carol? That's a viewers? golf tournament, and okay. all the proceeds go to our children's program. Right. And this is sponsored by the Crisis Servant Lutheran Church. Right. And um, Trivent Financial Services okay. and Kroger. They are the sponsors for and this. And that'll be held where? At Quail Creek. At Quail Creek. And what's the uh, kickoff time for that? It, you know? It's at um, 9 o'clock. Okay. Uh, and it's a shotgun, Captain's Choice. Right, right. And um, I don't have Peter Schaefer. He's kind of in charge of it. But, but if someone uh, wanted to learn more, they, they could call, call the me. Right, right. right. And ask for you, right. Carol Bozer. And I could tell them all. And plus, there's information on our website about the golf Good. tournament also. Yes, yes. Right. So two right. events coming up in in September, September right. 16th, the big event there at the Presbyterian Church, Carolina Forest right, right. Community uh, Church, right. there, right. Presbyterian Church. Right. Okay. And then um, September 29th. That's wonderful. That is fabulous. Well, there's so much that has to happen in, in caring for folks at, towards the latter part of their lives. What about palliative care? Well, palliative care, that's a good question. Yeah. Because a lot of people don't ask me what that is. Right. Actually, hospice care is palliative care okay. because you're getting uh, pain management. Right. Hospice care, we um, control the pain and we want the patient to, to die as uh, uh, alert as possible, pain free as possible, and we want to add days to, we want to add days to their life as well as quality to the, the end of life. But palliative care, we have a palliative care program, and we were one of the first in the state to, to oh, start yeah. that. Mm -hmm. um, we offer services to the chronically ill. Okay. Not, but before you diagnose terminally, it's right. for the chronically ill. Okay. And sometimes these patients will go into hospice, whether it's our hospice or another hospice right, here sure. in the county. Sometimes they will... Um, uh, go into the hospice program, or sometimes maybe they go into remission. Their disease goes mm -hmm. into remission. Right. So, and they're released from the program. Mm -hmm. But this palliative care is offered in the hospitals and nursing homes, and so we're very proud of that. But palliative care itself is really pain management. Okay, okay. And it's a little different in that it may not be supported by governmental entities, but right. Medicare or right. Medicaid, right. much like the last six months right. exactly. of someone's life exactly. would be. Sure. And that brings up another question. Most people think hospice care is for um, cancer patients only. Oh, is that right? Okay. Most people uh -huh. think that. I have, I have found that out. but. In um, reality, 78% of uh, patients nationwide are um, uh, cancer patients, but we accept any uh, diagnosis of a terminal illness, whether it's heart disease, stroke, AIDS, Alzheimer's, any of these uh, terminal illnesses mm -hmm. will qualify for hospice care. That is fabulous. Mm -hmm. That is wonderful. Right. And, and so you have folks, so whether it's children or parents of loved ones who are calling the 347-5500 number, going online, seeking answers of all ages, no matter what to condition, not just cancer, right, right. no matter not what cancer. condition it is. Right. So you right. want to make sure they'll right. call. Now, we don't ha per se have a children's can um, hospice program. Okay. We don't see children. Right. But we do offer bereavement and grief programs for okay. children. Good. You mentioned a kids program a minute ago. Right. Is, that, right. is it the bereavement and grief uh, the, the, portion right, of that? Right. Okay. It's, it's, and we have a grief and loss center right on our premises. Mm -hmm. And we serve not just our patients as far as bereavement support. Anyone. Anyone. Uh, we go into the public schools. Mm -hmm. We partner with them. Anytime there's a tragedy and an accident and the children need support and help, we're, okay. we're willing to go in and help them out any way we can. We have some excellent counselors. Good, good. Carol, does, um, does Mercy ever sub provide these services for folks who aren't in their home? Oh yeah. Okay. Oh, oh definitely. You mentioned definitely. I think that sometimes you go to the we nursing, nursing homes. Nursing homes. We're sure. contracted with all the nursing homes okay. in Ori County. Great. Good. All of them. 
and um, the hospitals. Good. In fact, a lot of times we pick up a patient right there through the hospital. You said three of your biggest supporters are, of course, your uh, or, uh, Green Sponsors. Sand Regional Medical mm -hmm. Center, big sponsors, Conway right. Medical Center. And obviously the Lord's Healthcare right, System. Lord's Conway and Grand Strand. Those are the three big ones. But I think Look, you mentioned also some service. Obviously, you're contracting out to Georgetown the and Walton Mall and, and Okay, and, Mary, and Walton right, Mall, of right, course, sure. Right, right. So there's deep ties that go with these uh, multiple community hospitals and for-profit hospitals. You, I'm sure you all don't discriminate. Oh, yeah, you want to yeah. interface with them as much as possible. Oh, definitely. That's wonderful. Definitely. And uh, we are the largest hospice. I don't know if I mentioned that. No, in you County. Is We're that the right? largest. Okay. And, and the I've been around the longest and the only non profit. That's fascinating. Well, obviously, big dogs always spurn others to get started. <laughs> and if, if there are yeah. 20 others out there right. in the area, then surely right. uh, seeing you all success has helped prompt that. But you know, competition is good. Oh, yeah, it's, sure. It's, it's good. It keeps you absolutely yes. right. And, uh, uh, That's why they have a director of development. That's exactly right. <laughs> yeah. Competition is yeah. good. That's yeah. exactly right. right. You didn't have competitors, yeah. And you've got this tremendous uh, brochure here. I don't know if viewers can see that, but it's got wonderful information about volunteer opportunities. You all have volunteers. Oh, yeah, here. that's yeah. part of it. That's yeah. part of our team. Our volunteers are our angels. We couldn't do without them, uh, and we're always in need. Okay. And if a person feels like they don't want to go into a home, that they just feel like they can't handle that emotionally, right. uh, we have many other things that Good. they can help us with in the office. Like what? Clerical yeah. things okay. in the office or... Um, I always need help with my fundraising. Good, good. So, um, Would a viewer need to have special uh, qualifications to help on fundraising or to help out uh, in the no, office? No, we do screen our volunteers. Okay, There's an sure. application because they're going into the home. Right. You know, and uh, we do a sled check, you know, good. to make sure. Because yeah. you know, since they're going into the home. Absolutely. Homes, but, um, our volunteers are wonderful, and we certainly do need them. And uh, I would love for them to call me and seek information about becoming a volunteer. Okay, and if someone can't reach you for a, a development volunteer needs, can they, they can, also they, call you for uh, any, any other? Any other okay. needs, and I can uh, refer them to the proper source. Uh, we do have a volunteer coordinator. Where is Mercy Hospice actually located, Carol? We're located in Waccamaw Medical Park Court, okay. right next to Conway Medical Center. Great, good. So Easy uh, to find. Right, very easy to find. Now, do, does anyone ever come to y'all's location? I mean, no one actually goes there for services themselves. You either... So, right. Okay. Sometimes, in fact, sure. our plans for the future, uh, we're in three buildings right now at right. Waccamaw Medical Park. We've got an right. executive building, our grief and law center mm -hmm. and then the um, administration and clinical building okay but our plans in the near future is to rent another building in that area and have a palliative care clinic great good that, that's one okay that's what I what about classes for volunteers are there ever any training for volunteers oh yeah sure oh, they definitely. they'll go through a training with program. someone who's in the last six months oh of their yeah life. oh yeah. definitely they'll go through a um, training program and they'll learn to recognize the the, um, the signs of the last couple of days of the dying, mm -hmm. and uh, it's emotional. A lot of people don't want to, uh, yeah. uh, and a lot of people that have had a patient want to wait a while because Before you know they, I mean, you do right. uh, establish bonds, and you know it's. But it, uh, it is uh, very rewarding. Yeah, yeah, break down that team again real quick, Carol. For viewers who missed it right here in the beginning of the interview, you talked about for each, uh, each, each patient. Right. Each, each patient has right. a um, registered nurse, okay. a certified nurse's assistant, a social worker, a chaplain, and a volunteer. Wow. So each patient has, uh, and again, if they've been diagnosed with less than six months or less to live, Medicare and Medicaid will step in. If not, right, uh, we'll, right. we'll, we'll make that happen. Right. And they don't have to. They don't want a chaplain to step in or they don't feel like they're ready for that. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, we, sure. we certainly adhere to their wishes. Sure. But five right. folks dedicated to every right. person in the last six months. So that's tremendous. And another thing, Greg, I failed to mention was we have a um, IDT uh, meeting every, twice a week to discuss all all these team members discuss each patient sometimes it takes hours 
but we, they want to make sure their care plan is up to date and there's nothing else needed or nothing else we can do or mm -hmm. it may change, you know, during the uh, progression of the disease. For you, Carol, spending the last 15 years of your life in nonprofit support and helping other groups, has anything been as gratifying as being involved in Mercy Hospice? Oh, I, I am truly dedicated to Mercy Hospice and I am... I dedicated to nonprofits also. Yeah. I've become a real advocate for the Alzheimer's Association. Right. And um, um, I had a, my husband's aunt lived with us for a couple of years with Alzheimer's. And mm -hmm. oh, that really made me an advocate. I really get out there and help fight that also. Right. I'm a member of that association. That's tremendous. Yeah. Right. Well, that's great. Surely the, the end of life experiences are so critical for not only that person but all their loved ones, right. all of their right. family members. But like I said, I love Mercy Hospice. I'm very passionate about the cause and for what we do. It's a great organization and um, uh, we're there to help the patients and the families as much as we can. And the volunteers, like I mentioned, they will do, you wouldn't believe some of the things they do for the patients. That's great. They'll read to them, they'll run errands, they'll prepare a meal, or just, you know, whatever yeah. needed. Those are great words. Carol, uh, thanks so much for being with us this morning. Thank Sorry you, we've Greg. run out of time. Oh, thank you, Greg. Absolutely. It was a pleasure being here. Stay tuned to more Carolina People with Carol Beaudry, Director of Development for Mercy Hospice and Palliative Care, coming up next. End of life issues impact so many. You can make a difference. You can make a difference every day if you if you don't know if you've got the funds to help support Mercy Hospice. Give them give them some time. Give them some time. Take the time to volunteer. Learn more about Mercy Hospice at 843-347-5500 or go online to mercyhospice.org. There's tremendous information on there about what's required of you as a volunteer. You've got to get involved, learn more about the organization to be able to learn more about that person you're going to be dealing with. And if you or a loved one or in the last six months of your life have been diagnosed with a terminal illness, you need to pick up the phone, 347-5500, or go online to mercyhospice.org. There's some tremendous information, and someone can make a difference for you in this last stage of your life. Take the time. Learn more.